This is Aisle 42. I'm no mixologist, but I do have high standards and having ethically produced premium gin made with locally sourced botanicals really does inspire me. The stunning spirits that are coming out of Sheringham Distillery here on the rugged west coast of Canada are approachable, sophisticated, and sustainably crafted. And I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation with chef and master distiller, Jason McIsaac. In this episode, you'll learn how Jason balances local ingredients and unconventional flavors to create unique, high-quality spirits that have taken them to the top of their industry with their Seaside Gin winning the World Gin Awards in the UK. Jason dives into how their local sourcing, seaweed harvesting, and sustainable practices all play a role into how they make artisanal gins, vodkas, liqueurs, and whiskeys that they're proud of. Their dedication to being carbon neutral by the end of next year is a bold aspiration for a distillery, so I think you're going to enjoy following their journey as much as I have. So let's jump right in. Here's Jason McIsaac from Sherringham Distillery. I'm so excited about this conversation because I love your product. I love everything that you guys do. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here and to be speaking with you today. Very cool. So for those that don't know Sheringham Distillery, can you tell us about where you guys work and what kind of beverages you make? Absolutely. Yeah, we are on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. We mostly make gin. We were established in 2015 by my wife, Elaine, and myself. And we operated in a small distillery in Shirley, BC, which is about half an hour past Souk towards Port Renfrew. We operated there for three years until... We just uh, couldn't physically produce any more out of that space, and we needed expansion. So we moved to the next neighboring town called Souk. We operated there until 2018, until this year, 2023, when we opened a new facility in Langford. We're there now, and we've closed our one in Shirley and closed our one in Souk, and we just have the one in Langford. We have a little bit more space, and... Um, which is great for as we uh, as we grow and expand, we'll need a bit more space. So we're kind of looking to the future for that. And the original location in Shirley uh, is really close proximity to Sheringham Point and Sheringham Point Lighthouse. And that's where we get the name from. That's amazing. What a beautiful area of Vancouver Island and the west coast of Canada. I've done some camping in that area, actually passed up on that coastline. It is just, it's raw, it's rugged, it's wild, and some weather torment at times. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is all those things. It's really beautiful. I love living here. I love working here. And uh, in fact, I love it so much that the gins that I've created, the recipes that I created are meant to be an expression of the area, mm-hmm. kind of a, a sense of place or a, a feel of the terroir. Yeah, explain that word, terroir. <laughs> it's a feel of the area or um, it's a real sensation of the area. So in wine, if you feel the terroir, it is the area that the grapes are grown. So the, the type of soil, the side of the hill that they are, the, the sun that they might get at certain times of day, the temperature is a cooler climate, is a warmer climate, that kind of a thing. So I took the idea of that and thought, you know, we have the West Coast, it's rugged, there's that beautiful, sweet sea air. So I want to capture a feel or sensation of that and put it into a gin, put it into, um, yeah, formulate it into a recipe so that it could express the area. So what we did with that is um, we used winged kelp, which is seaweed, for a seaside gin. Our seaside gin is our flagship, and that's the first aromatic spirit and gin that we started with. We use kelp. We use rose petals that uh, represent the nook of rose petals, uh, petals that grow wildly here on the coastline. We also use lavender, um, lemon and orange, and cardamom to give it a bit of spice. But um, there's a br- little brininess, little ocean on the palate that you get from the seaweed, from the kelp. And I think it also gives a little bit of umami and just uh, really helps all the other flavors carry through and keeps the, uh, the structure of that gin in place. I'm very familiar with your seaside gin. What are some of the other gins that, and uh, beverages you guys make? We just released our newest gin. It's called Rain Coast Gin. So again, it is meant to be an impression of the temperate rainforest that we have here on the West Coast. I used 
in the recipe to formulate the recipe, I use oak moss, cedar leaf, and nettles, some fresh lemon peel for some nice uh, citrus notes for gin and a nice bright aspect, and of course, juniper and coriander. And the idea of this gin was to represent the rainforest, but also after a fresh rain, the petrichor, the way that it feels, the sensation and the smell that you have uh, after it freshly rains in the forest. That's unreal. I, as you were describing some of those ingredients, I was reminded, actually, I was in Victoria, not far from where you are, and a bartender had a special drink. And I said, oh, you know, whatever you recommend is, you know, as I'm usually a adept at asking for a proper drink. So whatever he recommended, and he made a fantastic beverage. And right as he's about to serve it to me, I was very excited. He plopped a rosemary sprig in my glass, and then he lit it on fire. Wow, that's very, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, we blew out the fire and, you know, and, and he hands it to me and, and I put it in my mouth. I'm like, wow. It, uh, and he's like, so what do you, what do you think? And I'm like, well, it, it, it tastes like a burnt Christmas tree. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure that that flavor worked out for you. But <laughs> of the times that I've had your gins, there's a sophistication to what I'm drinking. However, I feel like, and then I know you guys pride yourself in it, but it's very approachable gin. It's very drinkable gin. And I know that's part of what you guys are doing. So tell me a little bit more about that, because as someone that really enjoys gin, I don't need it to be approachable. I love gin, but there are a lot of people that maybe it, do you find that people don't like gin or they're not sure how to consume it or what flavor profile is their favorite? What is it about making gin approachable and drinkable that's important to you guys? So we are on a mission to make the most approachable gin in the world. There's a few things that make it approachable. And one of those things is the price point. We wanted to have it kind of mid price. So people feel comfortable buying it. So it's something that it can be not only special occasion, but also an everyday uh, thing that you can celebrate, meaning instead of just being a special occasion gin. But we want to be able to have that quality, that taste and everything that a higher end gin will have. So um, my background is culinary. I cooked for 23 years. So all the things that I learned um, in that world, I brought to distillation, uh, a chef's approach to distillation as far as formulating recipes and creating recipes with big flavor and balance. So those are a lot of things that go into that. Yeah. I was going to ask you about the chef side of it. You know, there's plenty of people that get involved in this business that don't have that background. It, it must mean that your creative inputs are always swirling around in your brain. And you, do you ever feel like you're done with these formulations? Do you find yourself always tweaking and adjusting and wanting or wanting to? No, the, the ones that we have, I'm, I'm so happy with them and they're going to remain the exact recipe. I'm never going to change those ones. Um, I'm always working on new ideas and new uh, concepts and thoughts and new formulations and recipes. And I mean, and a part of the approachability is making a gin that is delicious and that everyone can appreciate. That's so cool. A lot of people have, uh, you know, a lot of different expertise at, at their distilleries. You have a, a biologist that works with you on the seaweed side. Talk to us about the seaweed portion of your ingredients. Yeah, Amanda Swimner, she is a biologist and she has a license to sustainably harvest the winged kelp that we use. So she puts on a wetsuit and brings her knife and bag out, swims down, harvests it so in a fashion that it will grow back. And um, she brings it back to her facility, cures it. And then when we need the seaweed, we get it from her. And when I was first coming up with the idea of using seaweed, I contacted her and said, hey, I have this idea. I want to use some seaweed. So she gave me a few to try out and experiment with um, some culinary ones. And I tried a few different ones, but definitely landed on the Alaria because it brought so much brightness. And um, the other ones were good. They weren't bad, but the, the, what the Alaria brought was just this fresh and brightness that, what I, that I was looking for. Very cool. What <laughs> that's People have farmers. Not many people have, you know, seaweed diver. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun, really. Do you ever go out with her? Do you ever strap, put on a wetsuit and grab a machete and go down there and <laughs> get it yourself? No, you know, I haven't, but I would, yeah. That sounds like a, a TV show in the making right there. It really does, yeah. 
So maybe you do have Ryle Reynolds in your in your back pocket, but you probably don't need them. You guys with your Seaside Gin have won the World Gin Awards in the UK. What's it like competing for Gin Awards? It sounds so mysterious, like castles in the fog and just like like top secret. What's it like competing at that t- at that level? It's really exciting. It's really exciting, and and one of the reasons I like it is because. The competitions that we've entered in the past, we send all our spirits out and they are, they're judged blindly. So there's no influence on labels or colors or aspects or anything of the brand. So these things are judged completely blind, which is so exciting because our gin over and over again has come. It's done really well, especially at the World Gin Awards in 2019 when we won the, uh, the top prize in the category of uh, contemporary gin best contemporary gin in the world, which was absolutely amazing. It still is amazing to say it out loud and experience. I honestly get goosebumps every time, like just right now. But um, for our our products to be able to go out there and be judged blindly and to be chosen w- with like some of the best gins and, and the best gin, it's really a dream come true. You know, it's, it's really amazing. That's so cool. I think when, uh, you know, you see on on bottles at times, you know, like stars or score ratings out of 100, or you see, you know, all these things. And there's not many gins that can claim being the best. So, <laughs> and ranked as such, it's uh, really remarkable. What have you guys learned along the way when it comes to sustainability and building, you know, and moving into a new facility is sort of like, sounds like you've kind of, you're building your, your mother ship headquarter distillery. What's it been like sort of considering all the environmental impacts and the sustainability initiatives that you guys have or that you want to lean into? Well, we've always been focused on sustainability. I mean, the winged kelp that we use in our first gin in 2015 uh, is sustainably harvested. A lot of the ingredients or the few, the core ingredients that we have in our products, we want them to be sustainable and to be able to be replenished or regrown easily. So with all that in mind, like, and um, just the future of the planet and the next generations, building this facility gave us an opportunity to really lean into, gave us opportunity to be able to focus on production, on the way we built our tasting room, the fuel that we use to fuel our, um, our boiler for production and stuff like that, just to um, to really kind of not start fresh, but I mean, just give us a great opportunity to be on the forefront of uh, implementing systems for sustainability here at the new location, like reusing the water, recycling water and reusing water that we use for our cooling system, using um, a sustainable uh, a fuel that's, that's made from capturing methane, buying in allotments of that, and uh, using a byproduct of our production to uh, create a new product, as in bitters, which we're working on. It's going to be coming out soon. So uh, just a, a bunch of things like that, yeah. The sustainability side of the equation, how does it play into product development and sort of growth for the business down the road? Is it, is it giving you guys inspiration or ideas or is it <laughs> presenting challenges? What does that look like for the future? Well, I mean, as we go on, we always want to be able to improve on all aspects of sustainability, whether it like from beginning to end. So um, anywhere where that we can make a difference or make an impact or better ourselves or, or our production or our system or facility or the way we re- operate it to move forward. I mean, that's what we're going to always gear towards. The shape of the bottles that you guys have, they're beautiful. They're, they're, they're thick glass, uh, glass is, you know, recyclable and there's so many benefits to glass. I mean, I know there's also downsides, things like breakage and things like that uh, can be a distribution challenge. But when you look at the bottling and the packaging side of things, what kind of innovations get you guys excited or that are on your radar moving forward for packaging? So our packaging, like our bottles, like you said, they when we started out, I wanted a bottle that was old timey but timeless. And we had this bottle available to us and we used it for a long time. And then we came up with our own custom one with embossed Sheringham on it. And um really happy with just the way it's turned out and the way that people have embraced it. It's almost become a bit of a our icon or like our symbol for Sheringham in a way, which is wonderful. But uh yeah, moving forward, always trying to think of um better ways and more efficient process for packaging and for um, streamlining 
production and manufacturing and stuff like that. Always kind of thinking what's going to be the next step and then the step up after that to try to stay ahead of it. Your gin's starting to go beyond the Canadian borders and, and people outside of Canada are enjoying it. What are your U.S. or international consumers saying about your story and your product? I mean, they must be resonating with this West Coast Vibes things pretty good. They really are. It's been really exciting. We've been um, activating pretty seriously in the U.S. We're in 20 states right now. Wow. I didn't know it was that many. That's fantastic. And the story that uh, we have and we're telling about ourselves, we are putting it out there and telling it to people and adjusting it for kind of region to region. But we're, we're hearing it told back to us in like news articles and magazines that people are actually, it's resonating with them and they're telling our story out there, which is so fun and exciting to hear. And um, yeah, we had really good feedback and response and we found that um, it turns out that people really like good quality gin out there. Yeah. <laughs> rumor has it <laughs> yeah. yeah i guess so from a sort of a marketing standpoint and, and reaching new gin drinkers what's your team learned sort of about marketing beyond your backyard i mean going out east uh, eastern canada going to the u.s going abroad what are some of the things your team's learned about you know communicating how beautiful the product is and what people can expect from it has it been easy has it been hard it sounds terrifying to me outside looking in yeah honestly it is terrifying to me but we have an excellent marketing team our head of marketing uh she's very very bright and um very innovative so she's been out there putting together ways to tell our story in different regions like you said but adjusting it to each area and um we just found that people are responding really well to it. And um, I feel like our story is being told and it's being heard and it's being listened to and people are uh, embracing it. The entertainment business is uh, often looked at as sort of detrimental to environmental goals. I mean, the event industry is uh, very can be very wasteful, but there's some people doing it differently. Some people trying to do big things boldly and you know, you guys have a partnership with the Seattle crack and the NHL team out of the climate pledge arena in seattle now i'm assuming you're still a vancouver canucks hockey fan i feel like that's important to, mm -hmm. you need you need to come clean uh potentially but what's that partnership like uh been like with the seattle kraken uh it's been a really really fantastic the kraken and the climate pledge arena they reached out to us and said we'd like you to be our house gin and represent us here in seattle and uh we said, yeah, that'd be great. We, they they chose us and, and we also chose them because we saw that our ethos aligned with uh, sustainability and kind of the uh, whole, the pledge to sustainability moving forward. So uh, we decided to go with them. But yeah, being in that arena and being a part of something uh, pretty big like that, as far as the uh, NHL team is very exciting. Again, we have a, uh, we have a lounge the Sheringham Lounge down there in the Climate Pledge Arena with a uh, slushy machine that makes lemon gin slushies and a lot of cocktails being served. And um, I've been fortunate enough to go down to a few games and uh, check it out. And yeah, it's really resonating with all the fans and people attending, and it seems to be going over really well. So we're, we're really happy to be there. I love it. That's such a riot. It is, yeah. So speaking of tasting and, and drinking, uh, your facility has a tasting room connected to it, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So our new facility in Langford here, right on West Shore Parkway, it's easy access from Victoria or from the highway. You can just zip in and zip back to the highway if you're passing through. And we're um, right on West Shore Parkway. It has a tasting room. We're open every day from 11 to 5. And we do complimentary tastings and you can have a visit, come in, ask some questions, look around. We sell some, um, we sell all of our products here and we also sell some branded stuff like my shirt here, for example. And we have uh, windows that are, that look straight into the production room. So you can have a look at the stills and everything there, and whether they're operating or not. They're a really eye candy when you're looking in there, check them out. So. Yeah. Some of that stuff you guys have there. So it's so, uh, I don't, it's not spacey. It's sort of old timey, but still high tech. It looks like crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does. It really does. Uh, stills are really like really fun to look at. And just all the piping work that's been done and the copper and the stainless and the black metal. It's, uh, 
just the way it lines up and the way it, it looks, it's always impressive. I love when I go to any other distillery or brewery and see all the stainless and the tanks. It makes me have a happy feeling. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So usually I start off uh, an episode with this question, but for you, I'm going to wrap it up in that. Uh, and I, I know that in some places and spaces, your product might be in grocery stores, but uh, often it's in other places and spaces. But in thinking of the grocery store for a moment, if you were to think in the future, what would be your ideal grocery shopping experience? So you're imagining the grocery store of the future, and it's the best grocery store in the world. What would that experience be like for you? Well, first, you'd have to go in and visit the Sheringham Gin Bar. <laughs> martinis, uh, gin martinis pre-shopping. Yeah, and relax and have a gin before while you're writing your uh, grocery list. And then a um, definitely a, a big selection of um, locally farmed produce and ethically raised meats as well. And um, yeah, just some, a lot of really high quality stuff. Yeah, sounds great, doesn't it? It, it really does. Yeah. I mean, for those that don't live on Vancouver Island, uh, where can listeners find your gin, find your liqueurs and, uh, and stay in touch with you guys? Uh, great. Yeah. We're in several liquor stores across Canada and in the U S now and private stores and provincial stores. We're always expanding and moving into new areas and new stores and new territories. So the best thing we'd do would be check in with us on our website and as we update that, we'll be able to let people know more and more where we're at. That's awesome. Yeah, good deal. Thanks for the the time and for uh, for doing this. I'm, I am a big fan. I will always be a big fan. And I brag about you guys all the time. And uh, I have to admit, I'm a bit stuck on the seaside gin. So you're going to, I guess I have my homework out for me, especially with this new gin that you've you've made. Can't wait to Can't wait to try that. It's fantastic stuff. Great. Thank you. And you, you really have to try our lemon gin liqueur and our rhubarb gin liqueur. I mean, they are hits. They're low ABV, almost ready to drink. Usually I just shake them over ice or add some soda. They're a little bit sweet, a little tart and very delicious. And uh, people are just loving it. That sounds amazing. I, I would love to, if no one, if I was never served a limoncello again, I'll be very happy. So I'm glad to have something more <laughs> elegant and beautiful to replace the next time someone offers me something horrible. I'm like, you know what you should have offered me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll like, you'll like it. you like this stuff. Good deal. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed that chat. I hope you did too. Jason and his co-founder, Elaine, really are making the future brighter through their passion for running a net zero distillery. Please visit them at sherryhemdistillery.com. And the next time you're at your local liquor store, ask for their seaside gin. Okay, that's it for now. I'm Corwin Hebert from Ethical Food Group, and I'll see you in the future.